Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm here to explain some things. These are from October 1989, when my unbridled romantic worldview was permanently shattered. This is from September 1982, uh, when I underwent a catastrophic loss of my ability to organize my finances in any meaningful way. Ah! But before all that, I took on a paralyzing, self-defeating, all-pervading dread of personal failure. October 1963, age two. But I'm getting off the subject here, I'm afraid. This story is about Ryan. I live in Toronto, a city in Canada where I see way too many shades of grey for my own good health. A few years ago, however, I became friends with a splash of colour in the form of a slight, fragile gentleman from Montreal named Ryan Larkin. Hello, Ryan. Hello, Christopher. Like me, Ryan is a filmmaker and animator. Three decades ago, he was a rising star in the world of animation. He's the creator of several short films, two of which have secured his place in the history of animated filmmaking. You want me to confess? <laughs> Today I asked Ryan if I could record our conversations. He replied by telling me about a simple inspiration he had back in 1968. Uh, so I said, you know, what I really want to do is, is make, a, make a film just with figures walking walking figures. Oh wow, you got some, oh wow, you got one of the original drawings. Ryan's looking at artwork he created 35 years ago. This is the first time he's seen this drawing since he created it. This is amazing. Oh wow, this is beautiful. 35 years ago, Ryan created thousands of drawings like this one and then put them together one after the other after the other. I, I meet people that, that, that say that my films that had influenced a whole generation of animation filmmakers, which is probably true. It was fabulous. It was a great honor to be, to be nominated. But, but, but then everybody gets nominated for Academy Award eventually. <laughs> See, I didn't actually win the Academy Award. Walt Disney won yeah. the award that year. That's how we looked for the Academy Awards. That's how we looked. This is this is what you wore to the Academy Awards. Yeah, right. You must have stood out like big time rock stars. Now, now I look at this. I think maybe perhaps I was uh, disqualified because of my costume. Who is that young woman? Felicity. Felicity was uh, uh, the love of my life for, for a long time. Ryan was always a little close to the edge. He was an emotionally fragile person. You know, his father had been violent when they were young, and uh, I'm sure you know about the tragedy of his brother's death, and that affected him enormously. We should have had children. <laughs> Guess it wasn't meant to be, eh? <laughs> oh, I still love you. In 1971, three years after the success of Walking, Ryan was struck Ryan. by another very simple inspiration, himself. I was always moving my body around in front of mirrors and stuff, and making drawings from from my body, you know, from flashes. And sometimes I even used a camera to record how how I was moving because it seemed to me that that I was moving in a very particular way that most other people weren't moving.
about somebody you know, right? Derek Lamb. He was my executive uh, producer. And he was a very nice, a, a very beautiful man. He was a guy that had been bursting with life five or six years earlier. You know, you could hardly contain the flow of drawings in his, in his cubicle at the film board. And now here's a guy, you know, who is living out every artist's worst fear of losing it. And angry. Well, well, cocaine, 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 cocaine. I couldn't stop these young thieves from the first they flush they of stop. addiction produced some amazing work. A life can be spent really trying to get that moment back. I really do hope that you get back into some serious creative work. That was one thing I wanted to say. The other thing that I wanted to say, I'm gonna say one thing, one concern that I have about you, which is your alcohol. Which is what? Your alcohol. My alcohol? Yes, your alcohol. Your alcoholic consumption is, as you know, pretty high. Um, I want you to consider beating alcohol in the same way that you beat cocaine. What? There's nothing I enjoy more than a good glass of cold beer. Am I supposed to give that up for like tea or something? No, can't do that. I personally want to see you around, and I personally want to see you thrive, Brian. Fry? Not fried. I want to see you thrive. What? Who's going to buy my creations? You know? What's in it for me? I don't create because I've been ripped off so fucking much, I decided to stop creating. Creativity, what do you think I can do, you know? I cannot do anything. I've been deprived. Deprivation is the most devastating thing. I will surely, you know, I'll be right on deck. I'll give up booze and give up cigarettes and be right on deck. If somebody gives me some fucking money, one cannot do anything, anything at all, without the power of money. I got like about, you know, $10 in my pocket, which is to me like a really happy experience. But to most people, they spend $10 every 15 minutes. I can't believe it, man. What possessed me to bring that subject up? I look at you and I see a lot of things about my mom. She was a brilliant woman. I look at you and I see a lot see of things, things as they mom. are. As she died of it. Every artist was feeling I know. Paralyzing. I, know. I see the way that she went downhill and I see the way that you come to this point. Personal failure. Personal failure. Personal failure. decided that if I was silent, there's nothing for them to steal anymore. If, if I present myself as being just a, a, a jerk on the street, 
but I'm still acquiring and enjoying human behavior and, and putting it back into my work. Bonsoir, merci. Spare change, sir? No? Okay, merci bien. Gentlemen, can spare a little change? Hey, thanks, man. Merci bien, monsieur. Monsieur, can spare a little change? Thank you, sir. Oh, you're very kind. 